Hey, this is Connor with Congruent X, and today I'm gonna show you how to create your own formulas in Canvas apps and how to return a table or an array from that formula. So you may be asking, well, why do I wanna define my own formulas? Well, have you ever found yourself having a copy and paste code in different places in your app? Or maybe you have to make a change to your code and you're having to change it in multiple places. You can do this today using components, but it takes forever to set up and is not really performant. So that's where user-defined functions comes in. And today, tables and records are not supported as a response from these new formulas, but I'm gonna show you how to get around that. One disclaimer before we go, you have to promise me you will not put this in your production apps yet. As of January 30th, this is still an experimental, it's just for us to play with. All right, let's take a use case where we have to calculate the distance between two points in an app. So maybe I need to check the user's location against some other location. This is what the code looks like to do that. This is not something I wanna copy around my app all over the place. This calculation is fairly advanced because the whole earth is curved thing, geodesics. So step one is we need to make sure we're on the right version of the app. So if you go to support and authoring version, I believe you have to pick this authoring version or later. And second, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we have user defined functions turned on. Now, once we've done that, you define user-defined formulas in the formula property of your app. The syntax for this is formula is gonna be your formula name, followed by parentheses. This is where all of your input parameters go. Your parameters are gonna be defined by the parameter name, followed by a colon, and this is where you specify the type, the data type, of your parameter going into your function. We can define multiple parameters. You'll just add a comma if you have multiple. And then we'll use a colon on the outside of our formula to define the response type. Then we'll just throw an equal sign. This is where we define what the formula does. So I can refer to my parameters and, you know, do whatever I need to do. So in our specific example, to write a formula that's gonna calculate the distance between two different points. I'm going to start by my function name. I'm gonna call our formula haversign distance because that's the actual mathematical calculation. We're gonna have two input parameters. We're gonna have the latitude and longitude of our target. Um, and then we're just gonna use the current location of the user. So we'll do latitude, which will be a decimal and longitude, which will also be a decimal. And for now, our response, we're just gonna return the actual distance between the two objects. So again, that's going to be a decimal. Throw up an equals. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this code. The code is not important. It's just for this use case. Okay, so now that we have our formula set up, I have this for dedicated formula that I can call to calculate the distance between two things. I'll show you what that looks like. This doesn't have to be called in a button. Uh, or a behavioral function. So if I look for haversign distance, this is my function. I'll pass in a latitude and longitude. There we go. There's our response. So now I can use this anywhere in my app. And if I need to make any changes to it, I can make a change in one place and not have to do that in multiple places and try to maintain that. So what if we want to return from this function more than just a distance between the two objects? What if I want to define like a radius, meaning I want this formula to answer the question, what's the distance between my user and this thing? And is it within my radius? And then a third thing, maybe I want to return, what's the difference? How far away are they from the radius? You could just copy and paste this formula three different times and call it something different and return them separately. Or I can show you this little hack that I found. So let's set this up to return a record. We're gonna define three different properties within that record. So first, I'm gonna add yet another with because I don't wanna to have to do this calculation again. I just wanna do it once and refer to it. So with our current distance, I wanna return three different things. I wanna return um, 
the total distance, which is going to equal to the current distance. We're going to return is within radius. And just above here, I'm going to define what our radius is going to be. Our um, geofence is going to equal 15 miles. But we'll say, is the current distance uh, we'll say less than or equal to the geofence. And finally, we'll do difference. So we will take the current distance and subtract the geofence distance. So you'll see that the stated function return type does not match the return type of the function body. All that means is this is returning a record and our um, function is not set up to return a record and it's not going to naturally. So what we can do is use a text type and we're going to wrap this record that we've created in a JSON function. And that's going to basically turn our record into a text string that we can then return from our function. So this is what our JSON looks like. It, it looks like it's just a regular record. Now the trick here is how do I actually consume this in my app, right? This text string doesn't really mean anything to me. So what we actually need to do here is we have to parse this response from a tech, from a JSON string into a record. So we will use the parse JSON function. And what you'll notice is if I start to use dot notation to try to return the distance, it does work. It does show the distance, but you can see we're getting, um, we're, we're getting an error here, right? Because we're returning an untyped object. Um, and all that means is we have to define what the shape of our record looks like. To do that, we're going to use the with statement again. If you were doing a table, you would want to use the for all statement. That way you apply this to all of the items um, in your, fu your function response. So I'm going to say with, we'll call it record response, or we'll just call it record. With record. And here, we're just going to manually define this record. So we know we've got a column called distance. We will use record.distance. And again, we're still going to run into an issue with type. So we just have to define what this type is. We will use the integer function to actually define the shape here. Now let's add um, is within radius. We'll use the Boolean function to define the data type. And finally, we will use the, um, I think I called it difference. Record dot difference. And lastly, um, you know, we've got a record type data type showing. So that's good. It's not saying an untyped anymore. We just need to define which thing we want to show. Here's our difference. That's a type of number. One correction, we want to use value instead of integer. Integer is just going to return whole numbers. We want value. So now we look at distance. So we could return the distance, or we could return is within radius, or we could return the difference. Now to me, this is way better than having to copy and paste this formula over and over. However, there is still a little bit of work having to parse the response of it every time. You could get fancy and create a response formula to actually handle that. Um, there's a lot of different ways to handle that part of it to make it even more simple. All right, well, that's all I've got for today. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, don't use it yet. Wait till it's generally available and ready to go. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below or reach out to us at congruentx.com. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.